the impact of the manual in the ports is presented to stakeholders. In 2019, we had 226 infractions all over Nigeria. 2020, it reduces to 121. And as at the ninth month today, we have only 12. And that has infraction. If you multiply those things, you see that you're talking about neighborhood, neighborhood of 4 billion naira. The agencies work together. They know they are being monitored. And so we are beginning to have clarity. The Nigerian Shippers Council is the leading agency in charge of implementing the manual. In order for us to take our pride of place as a maritime hub in this sub region of um, of the continent, the extent to which we are collaborating and cooperating with each other is the extent to which we are likely going to be very successful. For now, the Nigerian Port Process Manual is operating in Lagos, Port Harcourt, and Oni Ports. It is expected to be extended to other ports of the country. Winaya Kaluoka, ANT News. We'll take a break now. Network News continues shortly. Plus Plus is here and every day is now Christmas. Existing Glow customers will get 400% bonus on every recharge and 100 MB data bonus on first recharge of the month. New Glow customers will get 1,000 Nara welcome bonus. To activate, buy a new Glow SIM today or dial star 777 hash for existing Glow customers. Every day now Christmas with the Glow better get the Plus Plus. Everybody knows the secret to good cooking is that special ingredient. The mothers know it. But does this new generation know it? Let's find out. Mothers, daughters, are you ready? Yeah. Let the cooking begin. Erisco tomato paste. Ladies and gentlemen, food is ready. Food Erisco Regico and Najiko Tomato Paste is made by Erisco Foods Limited, feeding Africans with healthy foods. Extension of deadline for the submission of bids and initial bid deposit in respect of the 3.5 gigahertz spectrum auction. The Nigerian Communications Commission invites the public to note that the submission of responses in respect of the 3.5 gigahertz spectrum band auction was scheduled to close on Wednesday, November 24, 2021. However, due to the challenges posed to air travels as experienced recently and considering that it may have some impact on intending bidders regarding the submission of their bids, the Commission hereby extends the deadline for submission of bids and initial bid deposit IBDs to 5 p.m. on Monday, November 29, 2021. All other events are scheduled in the information memorandum remain unchanged. Professor Omar Garba Ambata, Executive Vice Chairman and Chief Executive, Nigerian Communications Commission, NAUSA. NCC. Connecting Nigeria. The Chairman. Presidential think tank on defense and security regrets to announce the postponement of the National Summit on the Protection of Nigeria's Critical National Infrastructure, Monuments and Business Assets, earlier scheduled for 6th and 7th December 2021. The postponement is caused by unforeseen circumstances beyond the control of the committee, while appealing to all stakeholders and our sponsors to stay action on their moves to support this national cause. We regret all inconveniences caused by the postponement and assure that a new date for the event will be duly communicated. Abdul Malik Jibril, Major General Retired, Chairman, Presidential Think Tank on Defense and Security, announcer. The Honorable Minister of Education, Malam Adamu Adamu, invites all candidates who successfully completed the Commonwealth Scholarships and Fellowship Plan application via electronic application system and fulfilled all necessary requirements stipulated in the 2021 CSFP prospectus to attend the interview as follows. Date, Monday, 29th November to Thursday, 2nd December 2021. Venue, Rosebud Hotel, opposite Federal Minister of Justice, Abuja. Time, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily. Only qualified candidates 
candidates will be attended to. Architect Sonny S.T. Echomo, Permanent Secretary, announcer. This is to bring to the notice of all federal public servants in the non-core MDAs, parastate and agencies, domiciled in states within the southwest geopolitical zone, that the service-wide IP's human resources records verification exercise will be conducted from 29th November to 10th December 2021. The exercise will be conducted in the following centers, states, venues, and dates. AKT, Ogun, Ondo, Oshun, and Oyo. Employees are to come along with the following. Online records and update duly endorsed and countersigned by the head of department and the head of human resources. Duly completed and signed personal verification form. Relevant educational credentials. Relevant professional certificates. Letter or gazette of first appointment. Last three promotion letters and current office ID. Verification cannot be done by proxy. For more details, please visit www.ohcsf.gov.ng and the nation's newspapers of Thursday, 25th November 2021. Dr. Marcos Ogumbi, permanent secretary, career management office for head of the civil service of the federation, announcer. Thanks for joining us. And uh, the minister and uh, minister of justice, Abubakar Malami, is still with us to talk about the declaration of bandits as terrorists. And I hear the audio level now; it's <laughs> excellent. Honourable Minister, the question I, as I, you know, I addressed you with earlier was to, you know, tell us why it took so long after security experts, Nigerians, have called and clamoured for the declaration. Why did it take so long? Indeed, <sighs> declaring. is a process and not exclusive process they take action the fundamental thing about it is the fact that at the end of the day the end has indeed justified the means taking into consideration the fact that eventually the judiciary by way of declaring bandits and digger and enter other as terrorists Okay, but, uh, uh, due process, has it been fully followed before the declaration? Indeed, due process must naturally be followed before the court could exercise discretion one way or the other. So the fact that an order that has been made has been granted by a, judi by a judiciary and indeed the, the, high court, the federal high court is a clear testimony of the fact that due process has been followed and consummated and eventually the order was granted. And uh, what are we going to be seeing in the future going forward with this action by the court of law? Uh, well, the court has sanctioned that no force is unreasonable as far as the elimination of the bandits, Mbindiga, and cattle, cattle, uh, kidnappers, cattle rustlers, among others, is concerned. So the implication in line with the international best practices is that the needful has been done, and then you expect a drastic, ruthless action against against kidnappers, and indeed against all those that are involved in one way or the other in kidnapping activities, banditry, and associated elements of our security challenges imposed on the country. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Attorney General and Minister of Justice Abu Bakr Malani on the declaration of bandits as serious. Thank you so much for your patience and for rejoining us time and time again. We appreciate you. Thank you, Yume. Thank you. Now let's talk agriculture. The Agricultural Transformation Plan of the federal government for achieving national food security has been taken a step further with the establishment of viable integrated farms in parts of Edo State modeled after Songhai farms in Port Novo, Penel Palik. The Minister of Water Resources, Suleiman Adamu, was in the state to officially inaugurate the farms set up by the Benin Owena River Basin Development Authority to further drive government food security program. Duakobong Achibong has the details. In 2016, the Minister of Water Resources charged all river basin development authorities to establish integrated farms modeled after the Songhai integrated farm in Benin Republic. Five years down the line, the minister is happy that the innovation is yielding dividends in Edo State, which such farms domiciled in Obayato and replicated in Auchi, Ope, and Ohorogu. The farms constitute a hub for effective production 
processing, training, and research. The minister officially inaugurated the integrated farms and the Bobda Youth Trainee Manual before being taken round the core farm areas at Bobda, sitting on six hectares with crop cultivation, aquaculture, livestock, and irrigation farming. I know a very, very rich country that will say that uh, we can fill in the gap uh, with food importation. For how long? It's not sustainable. So we have to grow what we eat and eat what we grow, in the words of President Buhari. For the Managing Director, Benin Owena River Basin Development Authority, Saliu Ahmed, the authority will scale up the farms. These farms are serving as outlets for our extension services and um, we are supporting the community members too to replicate what we are doing. The whole essence is to bring the best agri you know, uh, practices to the people, also give them a means of you know, livelihood. Bobda Integrated Farms has total land holdings areas put at 210 hectares. In Benin, Udrakobong, Achibong, NTA News. Three innovation hubs across three geopolitical zones of Nigeria have received 150 million grants from the Nigerian Export Promotion Council to scale up skill acquisition and development of the country's digital economy. The immediate past, past executive director of the Nigerian Export Promotion Council, Onishiagun Awolo, disclosed this during a strategic meeting with the National Information Technology Development Agency, NIDA, to review and consolidate on their partnership. Comfort Abondulo tells us more. The World Economic Forum says about 97 million new jobs will be created globally between now and 2025 out of which 80% will be outsourced. Experts believe Nigeria has the potential to leverage on export market services worth $4.7 trillion annually to attain exponential growth in foreign exchange earnings and employment opportunities in outsourced services. To realize this potential, the federal government set up a working group under the Export Expansion Facility Program of the Nigerian Export Promotion Council in collaboration with the National Information Technology Development Agency, NIDA, to grow Nigeria's export services sector. The strategic partnership has resulted in financial intervention to six startups, provision of grants to three innovative hubs, as well as advocacy for the speedy passage of the Nigerian Startup Bill. We are providing 150 million grant support to innovation hubs across three geopolitical zones in Nigeria and about 300 million in grants to support startups that are exporting and have potential to export services in the entertainment tech. Ensure that you effectively and efficiently utilize this grant for the purpose for which it is meant for. The Outsource Nigeria Initiative is also targeted at addressing challenges of cross-border payment system, which is a major hindrance to intra-African trade in Abuja, Comfort, Amadou, and T News. The Abdul Samad Radio Africa Initiative has donated 2.5 billion naira to Ogun State Government for the construction of mother and child hospital at the Olabisi Onabanjo University Teaching Hospital, Shagamo, Ogun State. Yemi Delemo reports. The 2.5 billion naira grant, according to the Abdul Samad Radio Africa Initiative, is to support the state government in constructing an ultra modern mother and child hospital at the Olabisi Onobaji University Teaching Hospital Shagamu as part of its $100 million annual African Fund for Societal Development. The Chief Executive Officer, ASR Africa Initiative, Ubon Udo, says the grant is approved to join hands with the state government in its efforts at delivering comprehensive health care services to the people quality of the vision for healthcare that we see within the state of course you know um, his excellency here has a uh, laser focus on healthcare um, the, where you can see the number of, uh, of initiatives that have come up look at especially what direction the state is going in healthcare or education and social development and see how we can synergize and, and plug into that. Appreciating the ASR Africa Initiative for the grant, Ogun State Governor Dapo Abiodun promised to ensure that the grant is put to good use. As an administration, these are the kind of relationships that we value and we nurture. These are some of the things that you've seen that has enabled your foundation and your chairman to consider us one out of the four states in the country 
to be given this kind of support. And we're indeed very grateful. The center will cater for mothers, including fetal medicine specialty, which is the care of babies in the womb before they are born. When they have abnormalities, you can detect them. Oh. The ASR Africa is the brainchild of African industrialist, philanthropists, and chairman of Bua Group, Abdul Samad Rabiu, established in 2021 to provide sustainable, impact-based, homegrown solutions to developmental issues affecting health, education, and societal development within Africa. In Apeokuta, Yemi Dalimo, NT News. To other news now, there is no need to express anxiety over how to acquire our aircraft to meet the April 2022 takeoff date of Nigeria Air as a well laid down procedure has been put in place to kickstart the process through a wet lease. Minister of Aviation Hadi Sidika made this explanation while answering questions from journalists in Abuja. Aviation correspondent Emmanuel Anyemiro reports. For professionals in the aviation industry, the amount of capital required to lease an aircraft is significantly less than the amount needed to purchase one. This, Aviation Minister Hadi Sirika says, will make acquisition rather easy than waiting for an aircraft to be manufactured, which must be ordered and naturally takes longer time. The airline is structured in such a way that they will start with the wet lease aircraft, and that's how most airlines, 90% of airlines in the world would have started. And that is what is felt in our business plan. So they will start with a wet lease of three aircraft, and then continue to expand. It will be run and managed by Nigerians, it will be flown and maintained by Nigerians, and together with the, which are the direct jobs created by the airline, of the packages of the national carrier is the provision of maintenance, repairs, and overhaul facilities, which is to be sited on a 12,000 hectares of land in Abuja to accommodate the second runway. It is important to have an MRO because if you are to fly out a wide body, high capacity, multiple aisle aircraft for maintenance, let's say to Europe. The ferry cost, just to ferry it out there and drop it for maintenance, is $250,000. To bring it back, another $250,000. For ownership structure, the government is to retain 5% share, 46% goes to Nigerians, while the remaining 49% goes to international partners. Emmanuel Ayemiro, NT News. Women of the 21st century across the globe are considered goldmine as they exhibit exceptional leadership qualities in steering the ship of any productive vessel. This is why in Nigeria, the Buhari Campaign Organization, in collaboration with other partners, saw the need to honor these distinguished women who have made the country proud in their chosen careers. Ilyasu Ali Yakubu reports. Attaining greatness in all aspects of human endeavors requires a high level of commitment perseverance and exhibition of leadership qualities in all ramifications. These Women Leadership Summit Award, organized by the Buhari Campaign Organization and its partners, is geared towards encouraging this category of women who have been discharging their duties diligently. If you empower a woman, it's like you empower a whole generation and a family, a country as a whole. And we know the importance of women. In terms of election, you see them in mass coming out in the rain or in the sun to queue to they are the first people that cast their vote. There are women whose leadership roles could have profound, positive, and democratic impact in communities, states, and the nation, but their voices are not heard. But we need to still do more as women. We must be able to bring table and chair to decision-making opportunities given to us. When you rise up, raise your hand down. Any woman you see there, grab hold of her hand and raise her along with you. That will take you higher. It will never get you down. The hour these while acknowledging the honor done them, promise to improve on their service to humanity. I feel really good to be here. I give best to Nigerians. The Buhari Campaign Organization is poised to continue to identify with great minds that are making Nigeria proud in their service to humanity. In Abuja, Ilyasu Aliyakubu, NTA News. With the growing 
global concern over fake news considering its influence on political, economic, and social well-being of Nigerians have been Nigerians have been advised to always verify information before spreading on any platform. Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Marlon Gerboshehu, made the plea while delivering a lecture during the club celebration of a decade of existence of Federal University, Dusema. Shehu Adamu completes the report. The lecture with the title, Fake News Challenges of Information Management, focuses on three components of it. spreading as readers cannot filter the content to differentiate between lies and the truth. People should begin to exercise the responsibility. Why from the Katana State Governor Hadiza Aminu Masari advised students against spreading fake news and dealing in drugs to attain a virile society. Vice Chancellor of Federal University Dusama, Professor Armaya Wahami Subichi, expressed gratitude to the federal and Katana State government for their support to the university within 10 years of its existence. In Katsuna, Shehu Adamu, NTA News. Hingino is standing by in Lagos with more reports from that axis on network news. Hello, Hingino. Thank you, Jumai. Lagos state government has reiterated commitment to providing decent and affordable accommodation for workers in the state's public service. Governor Baba Didison will state this after handing over 480 Lagos homes to residents in Igbogbo, Baeku, local council development area of Ikorodu. Musa Toliat reports. Housing scheme comprises 40 blocks of 480 home units built on a land area of 15 hectares. Governor Baba Jide Sonwolu stressed that the involvement of private sector in housing development is vital to facilitate the delivery of much higher number of housing units than what the government can achieve using the direct budgetary provision option. He therefore unveiled the government's inclusive policy and commitment to the welfare of workers in the area of housing provision known as Imota Workers City. We are at a very advanced stage of closing a transaction with private sector developer to build a total of 3,456 units of special workers' estate in the state. The Imota Worker City will be built on 20 hectares of land at Imota. The home unit will be accessed by workers in the public and private sector especially the public sector. In terms of job creation through construction work in various housing schemes, the Lagos State government says not less than 16,904 direct economic engagements for consultants, contractors, and artisans have been created in the state. That estate has been completed and that infrastructure needed to have gone in before the completion. But we have a phase two coming up and we have a joint venture development coming up there too. Governor Sonwolu thereafter laid the foundation for the construction of second phase of the housing scheme which will yield a total of 192 two-bedroom flats in the same axis of Ikorodu in Lagos, Musa, Toliad, NTA News. Empowering youth, sustainable development and eradicating poverty dominated discussions at a workshop held in Lagos to strategize towards improving the education sector. Lim Lenike has the details. Providing a better learning environment and opportunities as well as advocating for children's rights and health remain critical to the national development. A good and a future. This forum is a wake-up call for all to collaborate and bridge the gap between private and community schools. Stakeholders here are also soliciting increased funding and the integration of globally accepted skills in education. Already we have so many um, 
information coming in from all across the country of situations of bad infrastructure, dilapidated in their infrastructures, abandoned schools. So we are looking forward to being able to do it one school at a time. The education of our children is the responsibility of all. Parents, teachers, community leaders, you and I, yes, we need to put hands together to improve and transform education in Nigeria. The forum, among other things, examined challenges in the education sector. To talk about people using education, doing bad things, but using brilliancy. So for us, we need to be able to channel the mindset of the children into good. We must also know that teachers have a role to play, but parents also have roles to play. So kindness to kids, I am recommending it as a tonic for the whole country. Educationists and key players here believe that the event marks a milestone in the education sector. In Lagos, Lynn Lenake, NTA News. We pause here for another break. The news will be back shortly. We have come a long way together from our first steps to taking giant strides as we conquered new territories. We move. We have built Africa's favorite network with the power of possibilities, community support, and the unstoppable Nija spirit. We are about to set out again, and there's no one we would rather set out with than you. We move. that Christmas is what you make of it. At Bed Made Furniture, we enjoy making your Christmas comfortable and exciting with the furniture we provide you. That's why from 1st November to 18 December 2021, Bed Maids offers you and your loved ones amazing luxury furniture your home loves and truly needs at up to 70% discount. You also stand the chance to win fridges, TVs, washing machines, and many more as we keep making your living better through the furniture you love. Hooray! The good news is here at last. The federal government, in collaboration with states, local governments, and councils through Alcon, with the Nigeria stakeholders, has rolled out the National Anti Multiple Taxation Scheme, NAMTAX, and National Transit Insurance Scheme, NATIS, using National Joint Compliance Monitoring and Enforcement Team to put an end to all illegal roadblocks, illegal taxation, illegal levies, harassment, assaults, molestations, killings on the road, thereby reducing the prices of goods and services. Oh, yes, farmers, transporters, manufacturers, dealers, distributors, miners, and traders, ETC, can now assess safety, security, surveillance, and emergency rescue and move freely on Nigerian roads. Beneficiaries are required to buy safety, security, and emergency rescue sticker once a year from accredited certified registered vendors nationwide. While loading and offloading permit fee per trip is also required to qualify for the services. In case of any emergency, quickly use the special shop code 7744 indicated on the rescue sticker to assess immediate services of the compliance monitoring and enforcement group established in each of the local government councils, area councils, and LCDs. Zenith Bank, UBA, First Bank, and Sun Trust Bank are approved and official bankers of the NAMTAS project. At the first sign of pain, you need a solution that you can trust. Try Panadol Caplets. With Panadol's Optizop formula, the tablet absorbs quickly and starts providing fast and effective pain relief you can trust. Try Panadol Caplets. Not all washing powders are the same. Sunlight adds bursts of freshness to cleaning power to give you sunlight two in one. For sensational cleaning and freshness that lasts. Sunlight two in one. Sensational cleaning with burst after burst of freshness. Introducing Sunlight with luxurious oud fragrance. With gratitude to God Almighty for a life well spent, we, the families of late Chief Onoha Isaac Nabuchi and late Mrs. Audi Isaac Nabuchi, announce the call to glory of our son, father, grandfather, brother-in-law, and uncle, late Mazi Jacob Okoro Isaac Nabuchi JP, who slept in the Lord on the 16th September 2021 after a brief illness. Funeral announcement on 10 a.m. Saturday, 27th November 2021, open air service at Atani Primary School Field, Arochuku. Mr. Franklin Ijoma Isaac Jacob, Chief Mona for the family. <laughs> 
The scripture says there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. The Christian Reformed Church in Nigeria, CIC Nigeria, is inviting the entire body of Christ to the retirement service of our president, the Reverend Dr. Caleb Osheka Salam Ahimo, from active pastoral service, chairman of the occasion, former judge of the Supreme Court, Justice Paul Adamugalunji, retired, special guest of honor, His Excellency, the executive governor of Tarabasto, at the direct Dixon Isha, who the acting people of guest of honor, Senator Emmanuel Bocha, COM, Senate Deputy Minority Leader, guest speaker, Archbishop Manuel Bapa, LCCN Emeritus, Father of the Day, former Minister of Defense, Lieutenant General T.Y. Njuma, retired, the Abota Okari, Mother of the Day, former Chief Judge of Taraba State, Honorable Justice Josephine Yakubo Tukto retired. Royal Father of the Day, His Royal Highness, Garadonga Sangwala Varzua Shambura Gadbanyi II. Host, CRC Nigeria Headquarters. Chief Host, Reverend Sagarga Gargaya Mvoga, CRC Nigeria General Secretary. Date, 27 November 2021. Time, 10 a.m. Venue, CRC Nigeria Number 1, Taukum. To God be the glory. Announcer, Publicity Subcommittee. Thanks for joining us and just to let you know the news will go beyond the normal hour. Don't go away. Do stay with us. Let's continue. The Federal Road Safety Corps has assured continued efforts in preventing avoidable loss of lives and property through its core statutory mandate of ensuring road safety for all. This was stated by the Chairman Federal Road Safety Board, Marlon Buharibello, while inaugurating the ultra modern office complex in the Minkebi. Correspondent Abuja Jalil Mohammed Bawa reports. Malam Buhari Velo said the new office complex will open a new chapter in the activities of the core in the state. May I reiterate the commitment of the FRC towards judicious utilization of this new office complex for optimal performance of the workforce. The core marshal, Federal Road Safety Corps, Boboe Oeyemi, commended the present administration for providing funds for the construction of the office. And I thank you, Excellence, for what you have been doing for us. I want to contribute next week. I will send a new vehicle here. In his remark, the Kebi State Governor, Abakar Atiku Bagudu, commended the effort of the Federal Road Safety Corps in safeguarding the lives and property of the public through sensitization of the people. Road safety is even mental health of society, so that an agency can be set up with a profound thought process that they are not, they are not just enforcing the rules, but they have a broader mission of ensuring that Society is reflective of the best mental state. The KB State Office is the 16th office to be inaugurated in the country within the last seven years. In Burning KB, Abdul Jalil Mohammed Ba, NTA News. A 4.4 kilometer road linking Gombe Road to Medjugri Bypass in Bauchi State has been inaugurated by the former Vice President Atiku Abubakar. Mahmoud Ibn Mohammed reports. It's a jubilee here in Bauchi as the former vice president Atiku Abakar commissions the 4.4 kilometers Gombe Road Medugri Bypass Link Road. <laughs> Named after him, the former vice president described the infrastructure renewal projects of Governor Bala Muhammad as a dream come true for the people. These development projects actually have become instruments of economic empowerment. has remained without a bypass on the eastern access. To discontent the traffic congestion caused by the movement of heavy trucks into the city center and the central business areas with attendant hazards and inconveniences. I'm glad to say that this road was therefore conceived and executed to address these noble objectives. The governor added that he will not be distracted and will continue to execute people-oriented projects. In Bauchi, Mahmoud ibn Muhammad, NTA News. Kaduna is next and Suleiman is our guide. Hello, Suleiman. And welcome. Telecommunications service suspended in four local government areas of Kaduna State about two months ago 
has been restored, indicating success in the fight against kidnapping and banditry in the affected areas. Charlie Maxwell reports that the state government suspended the service as part of its security containment measures. Towns of Igabi, Chukun, Bodwingwari, and Yuanoka government areas have been contending with lack of telecommunication service as a result of government's decision to impose such containment measures. We are also at briefing journalists on the reasons for the restoration of telecommunication service. The State Commissioner of Internal Security and Home Affairs, Samuel Arwan, says the suspension of mobile networks helped in disseminating kidnappers and bandits. He says security situation has significantly improved, hence the need for government to heed to security advice to restore service. We are also appealing to you uh, to look at the circumstances, to look at the situation that we have found ourselves. This is not a problem that is applicable to Kaduna State alone. No, this is a problem. It's a national problem. It's a threat to national security. Other measures put in place, such as ban on movement of motorcycles, operation of weekly markets, and cutting down of firewood is still in force. Samuel had one urged people in the state to continue to support security agencies with relevant information that will assist in addressing security concerns. In Kaduna, Achari Maxwell, NTA News. Defense and security forces in Nigeria agreed to intensify synergy in training and execution of war against criminality. This played out at a joint military training for participants of Junior Course 92 of Armed Forces Command and Staff College, Jaji Kaduna. The report. In consonance with the training models of the Armed Forces Command and Staff College Judge, students of Junior Course 92 conduct exercise Ubiakisin, a simulation exercise to evaluate understanding of the course participants on counter-terrorism and counter-insurgency in battle condition. It is a joint exercise that so effective synergy in response to emergency situations. What we are doing is in tandem with the situation we have found ourselves today, and then we are trying to get them attuned to the reality on ground. Uh, with what we have seen uh, so far, so good. I have every conviction that uh, very soon there will be light at the end of the tunnel. At the end of the course, when they go back to the field, they will be able to perform wonders. Host communities acknowledge medical outreach and welfare package extended to them as a wake-up call to support security operatives with useful information about miscreants. Exercise Ubiakisin climaxes one-year academic and military training for course participants, including junior officers of sister services in Armed Forces Command and Staff College. Report is back to Jumai for more on network news. How hot is she? Pick me, just pick me, baby. Come pick me, girl, man. I'm all ready for you. Mmm, so tasty. He's so Mimi, taste the fun. The Apostolic Church, Nigeria, Abuja FCT Metropolitan Area, Lona Territory, presents her third annual convention theme, Behold the Bridegroom Comet, Matthew 25, verse 6, date, Friday 26th to Sunday 28th, November 2021. Venue, FCT Metropolitan Area Headquarters, Plot 494, Durumi District, Garaki, Abuja. Theme, Mountains, Shoot forth Your Branches, Ezekiel 36, verse 8, Ministry Evangelists, Pastor D.O. Oweye, Pastor S.O. Shodipo, Pastor D.A. Ogunlade, Pastor E.O. Akindumi, Pastor C. O. Olan Lokun, Pastor G. O. Ajayi, Pastor J. A. Ayola, Pastor S. O. Ajibola, Pastor I. O. Fadipe, Convener, Pastor Dr. E. S. Awujide, National Vice President and Lona Territory Chairman, Overseer I. A. Edit, Secretary Planning Committee, Pastor J. O. Alo, Chairman Planning Committee. Your faith in Christ shall be deepened as you attend this convention. How to make a perfect bowl of love? A perfect blend of taste that brings every ingredient to life. The fusion of different spices. The unique aroma that rejuvenates your senses. The heartwarming deliciousness. And the satisfaction that comes from every bite, which makes you say, hmm, I love my Indomie. Once upon a time, an idea was born. It grew into one institution with a master plan. Since 1989, IBTC has evolved to become Stambic IBTC, setting the base as one of the first holding companies in Nigeria. Over the years, we've expanded beyond banking to owning formidable business subsidiaries across 10 industries, all backed up with
triple A Fitch rating. With over 4,000 employees, our presence across the country is further strengthened by our efficient network of digital channels. Our dedication to the Nigerian dream has granted us recognition 44 times by 18 awarding bodies in six sectors. We are proud to be champions of exponential trade finance through our partnership with the largest bank in the world, facilitated across 22 sectors. Nigeria is our home, and we are committed to driving her growth. So whatever your dream is, we believe it can be. There is a saying that Christmas is what you make of it. At Bed Made Furniture, we enjoy making your Christmas comfortable and exciting with the furniture we provide you. That's why from 1st November to 18 December 2021, Bed Maids offers you and your loved ones amazing luxury furniture your home loves and truly needs at up to 70% discount. You also stand a chance to win fridges, TVs, washing machines and many more as we keep making your living better through the furniture you love. The Mpakuru's ruling family of Abagi Kodongwen, a back local government area of Akwaibo home state, announced the passing away of their beloved husband, father, grandfather, father in law, brother, and uncle, Let Reverend and Nephew aged 79. His remains will be led to rest after a funeral service to be conducted by Koibo Church 47 A Kodokoro Road, Abak, Akwaibo home state. Date Saturday, November 27, 2021. Venue. Government Primary School, number one, Pokoro Street, Abak, Akwaibom State, time 10 a.m. Sunday, November 28, 2021, Thanksgiving service at Koibo Church, 47 A Korokoro Road, Abak, time 10 a.m. Let Reverend and Nephew Okedemo both have left behind his dear wife, children, grandchildren, sons-in-law, daughter-in-law, brothers, sisters, sister-in-law, and a host of other relatives, too numerous to mention, to mourn his demise. Adieu, Reverend Obot, Etia Tenye, Teacher Obot, Sanga Sungo, Sign, Honorable Deaconess Christy Obot's wife, Engineer Betty Obot's son, Chief Mourner for the family. Liverpool will look to mount the pressure on table toppers Chelsea when they welcome Southampton to Anfield. It's Liverpool versus Southampton this Saturday, showing on the network service of the NTA from 3.30 p.m. The Premier League Live is brought to you by Baba Ijebu and powered by Integral. You're welcome back. Sports update is next. Two wheelchair tennis players, consisting 15 male and 7 female from Kenya and Nigeria, are currently participating in a three-day Puma Engineering wheelchair tennis tournament ongoing at the Package B section of the Moshuda Biola National Stadium in Abuja. Organizers of the competition say the tournament is aimed at putting the wheelchair tennis players in shape for future national and international competitions. The special people need support. They also have their own qualities. They also have their own intellect. If given opportunity, they will excel. The Scrabble, the 2021 Gladiators Web Spa World Premier Scrabble Tournament will enter day three on Saturday. 11 Nigerian players have been participating virtually alongside other 105 Scrabblers from 23 countries after day two. Prince Omosefe of Team Nigeria placed fifth on the charts while others are following. I just hope to put in my best and do a better fit than the last time. To basketball, Nigeria's D Tigers will be hoping to bounce back from their loss to Cape Verde as they prepare to take on Mali on Saturday in the second match of their 2023 FIBA World Cup qualifying campaign. The team will need to step up their game on Saturday for them to gain qualification. To football, Chief of Naval Staff Vice Admiral Awal Gambu will lead other top naval and military officers to the finals of this year's annual Chief of Naval Staff Under 14 Boys and Navy Officers Wives Association Under 17 Girls Football Finals slated for Saturday 27, 2021. Elsewhere, Arsenal will be looking to come back to winning ways as they take on Newcastle on Saturday at the Emirates. Crystal Palace will take on Aston Villa as Liverpool welcomes Southampton in a match that will be shown live on the NCA network from 3.30 p.m. To La Liga, Alaves will welcome Celta Vigo in the early kickoff as Valencia take on Rayo Villacano. 
Mayoka will play host to get Getafe in a crucial game that comes up by 6.30 p.m. and will be shown live on the NTA. That's all from the sports decks at this hour. I am Cynthia Ogun, NTA News. Thank you, Cynthia. The remains of late Brigadier General Zerma Zekusu, Commander 28 Tax Force Brigade in Chibok, Borno State, have been buried in a military cemetery at Gibson Diallo Cantonment Yola, Adamawa State. Yusuf Jika reports that General Zekusu was buried alongside seven other officers and soldiers recently killed by insurgents while on active service in Askira Uba, Borno State. The military cemetery Gibson Jalo Cantonment was agog with mourners who come from far and near to pay their last respects to eight officers and soldiers who paid the supreme sacrifice in the northeast in the defense of their fatherland. Their Brigadier General Zarma Zirkushi, Commander 28 Tax Force Brigade, Chibok, Borno State, Major Luca Bardi, Lieutenant Otman, Private Lenyaro, Private Salim Muhammad, Private Simon Solomon, Private Abubakar Yusuf, and Lance Corporal Oladiji Victor. Our nation is in deep mourning because these men were dedicated men, were resourceful men, were gallant men. We will continue to pray also for the repose of those of them who have paid the sprung price, those of today, and even those who have paid earlier. Media, the brave family members bear their minds. I know he's a good boy because in NDA, he was given a very good recommendation. He tried to give his assistance to as many as he can, as he can at all times. Governor Amadou Morofentri has supported the families of the slain officers and soldiers with 27 million naira. In Zilbush's death, we have lost a son and a patron, a highly decorated soldier, and an outstanding commander whose onslaught against the dreaded insurgents has rekindled the hopes of our communities. Earlier, funeral service and funeral prayers were held for the eight officers and soldiers at Gibson Jalo Cantonment, Yola, respectively. Yusuf Jika, NT News. And that's Network News, and our sincere apologies for starting the news late. Thank you very much for your time and patience. And before we go, you know, you have to join NT in the fight against rape and rapists. I am 